Welcome to Q&A Selling Online with answers to questions about creating an online empire, promoting products, or building a brand. Your host, private label and e-commerce entrepreneur, Quinn Amorm. Welcome back to the show, my friends. Today, we have with us the head of sales at Z, an importer of record. His name is Rail Lowenthal. Rail, how's it going? Hi, Quinn. Uh, thank you very much for, for having us today. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. And, you know, I, I want to take things slow before I start uh, asking you what is uh, IOR. I want to kind of break it down. And so everybody that's listening knows these terms. So Z is an importer of record. Can you Correct. explain what that means? Sure. Um, so I think maybe for the benefit of your listeners, I'm going to explain what it means in the context of e-commerce and uh, maybe Amazon FBA specifically. So essentially, an importer of record is a local entity with a physical presence in a specific destination country that takes on the um, customs liability of an import. So the best way to explain it is by way of an example. So say, uh, Ken, you, you're based in Canada. You'd like to sell in the UK or the European markets, uh, let's say Germany as an example, and you need to send stock, uh, let's say, from your supply in China or from your warehouse in Canada uh, into Germany. And uh, German customs require a local entity with a physical presence to take on that cust the customs liability uh, of that import. So because you're based outside of that destination country, uh, the customs office wants a, a local entity based in Germany um, basically to take on the, the liability of the import. And, and that includes the liability for any unpaid duties and taxes, uh, a form of product liability, as well as uh, the audit responsibility uh, for each and every one of those imports, you know, that we would act on your behalf. Beautiful. Now, Rail, I, I actually, I jumped into it too fast. And, but some, before I started, I should have asked you, you are, you're in South Africa, correct? Yes. So uh, our operations center is based in South Africa, in Johannesburg. Uh, we actually form part of a larger group of companies called the VAT IT Group. Um, which is the largest VAT reclamation and compliance group in the world, uh, which has a, a global network of about 50 offices, uh, which allows us to, uh, to offer the, you know, the type of services that we do. Nice. So Johannesburg, uh, I lived in Portugal many years, and there was a lot of connections between Portugal and Johannesburg. So I know normally people call it Josie. I don't know if you guys do the same thing over there. Yeah, it's and, uh, Josie, or, or, or colloquially in, in an African language, it's called Mzanzi, which means the South. Nice. And from what I heard, it's uh, it's called um, it's a mega city. Does that mean it's like insanely big, kind of like New York, or not really? It is. It's what, what in geography terms you'd call a megalopolis because it's it basically sits between two two sort of smaller cities. So you you have almost three cities connected to each other, uh, with Johannesburg sitting in the middle. Um, so yeah, it is. It's it's pretty big. Nice. All right. Now, uh, when it comes to Z, the name is very short, and your domain is super short, right? It's just Z E E. Now. Why was it named like that? Was it because you're lucky enough to have the domain or the domain was uh, secondary? No, I think, uh, look, I think we, we serve, uh, you know, Amazon FBA sellers uh, with a little bit of a play on A to Z, meaning, you know, we take control of the entire process, you know, shipping process A to Z, which we'll get into a little bit later, uh, you know, on the podcast. But uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a play on a few things. You know, there's a little bit of around e-commerce, um, but there, I don't think there was too much, uh, you know, kind of thought process behind it. I think it's something that's catchy. It's short. It's easy to remember. Um, and it's a, you know, a fun and friendly and, and very technology focused brand. Nice. Yeah. I, I, I was wondering that because like when I look at a, a brand name for any brand that I start, I never finalize naming it until I know I can secure uh, the domain for that. So I was wondering if you had the same thought process or if it was just because uh, I do like them short and that this is as short as you get, right? Yeah. So, I mean, funny story about the domain. Um, there's, you know, there's people on the internet that pretty much buy 
uh, domains for fun and then kind of, uh, you know, try and negotiate quite heavily around what they actually want for the price. And they went, you know, the intention was never actually to use the domain. It was purely just to extort somebody for extra money. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, our CEO has, has quite a funny story about how our, our domain, how the negotiation went down for our domain anyway. But uh, we got the domain, uh, you know, we're really happy with it. And uh, I feel like it, 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 sh- it shows the simplicity in what we can do uh, for a very sort of complex process. You know, the import and logistics process is complex. Uh, Z with its short and, and sweet name simplifies it and, and, and makes it easy, you know, for our customers. And now Z, it, it, I guess... Uh, Amazon sellers is probably a, a good target audience for you, but you don't just work with Amazon sellers, right? It's anybody that's importing, exporting. Is that right? Yeah, correct. So our, our focus is on e-commerce sellers. Um, the specific focus is on Amazon FBA, but we will look at uh, you know uh, the sellers who use Shopify, who use Walmart, um, uh, eBay. We'll we'll pretty much look at anything. All right. So you kind of already explained some of the services that that you provide. Uh, I don't know if that was all, but here, let it out. What kind of services does um, Z provide as Amazon sellers is kind of like the the number one uh, listener right now. Uh, What do you have to offer? Uh, Do do you offer, for example, uh, the shipping of that item too, or you just deal with the customs? So I, th- I think let's let's maybe take a take a step back for the benefit of your listeners. So mm-hmm. um, and 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 to just to explain why why we exist and and uh, what kind of uh, service we fulfill on behalf of Amazon sellers specifically. So if you look at uh, you know am- any of Amazon's text in their their seller central blogs, uh, you know kind of all over their their marketing, uh, they state categorically that they will never act. Uh, as an import of record on behalf of their sellers. Uh, so they'll pretty much assist you with everything else. They'll, they've partnered with various uh, VAT suppliers that can help you with uh, VAT registration and ongoing compliance. They can help you with logistics. Uh, they, you know, they obviously help you with your brand registry and, and you know, pretty much everything else except for uh, this, this specific import of record and customs compliance service. So that's essentially where we fit in. Um, the, the service can be explained uh, as an importer of record and import compliance and customs clearance solution uh, with a value added logistics service uh, to make it end to end. So, li- like I explained earlier, uh, you know, if you're a seller looking to expand into a new market outside of your local marketplace, uh, chances are that that new market is going to require a local entity with a physical presence to take on the customs liability of that import, which is obviously the the service that we provide. And then as a value added solution, we have a a partnerships with various courier services, the likes of FedEx, DHL, and UPS. And uh, because of the volume of shipments that we do on a a monthly and annual basis with them, we have volume driven discounted rates, which uh, our clients then benefit from as a result. So, when combined, you know, we, we will pick up your inventory, we'll arrange the international freight, we'll act as your import of record, perform the customs clearance in the destination country, we'll track the final delivery to the, the Amazon facility, and then provide you with all the necessary documentation, uh, you know, once the goods have cleared. That kind of leads me to my next point. Uh, a very important part of our service is that we never take on physical ownership of your goods. We act as a third-party importer, and we prepare the import documentation in a manner that allows the seller to reclaim import VAT uh, that's payable upon clearance. So that customs clearance document that we provide to the seller once the goods have cleared uh, will will serve as the mechanism, the documentary mechanism that's needed to reclaim the import VAT in their local filing. So practically speaking, they'll provide that to their local accountant or VAT provider to put in their local VAT return as the the claim uh, against the sales VAT that they make in that particular country. Nice. Very good. So you did mention uh, import compliance. And and that's something that a lot of sellers uh, on Amazon, uh, when they start, that's something that in most courses that I've seen, that's not even mentioned. And people start importing things that technically can't be just brought over like that. Like, uh, I, for example, wood is one that I bring up uh, often to people that wood has to be fumigated. And 
some people just order wood things in China and, and then bring them into the USA. Now, that's something that you offer as well. If, if, I, if I'm importing something, I can just tell you what it is. And you guys can basically, if you offer like a, a turnkey solution of telling me, you have to do this, this, and or do you actually go and take care of whatever compliance needs to be done? So, so that's a great question. So um, we have a product compliance team that during the onboarding process as a client will identify all the, the specific product compliance documentation uh, that's needed for the specific destination country. So we won't we, we don't have the ability to let say apply for that specific certification or obtain it on your behalf or on the seller's mm -hmm. behalf, but we will assist uh, the seller in identifying what is required and then potentially be able to point them in the right direction uh, to be able to do it. So uh, I can give you I can give you a good example of where this really applies is when a seller wants to import food or cosmetics into the United States. And uh, in that case, you know, if they're not based in the United States, they need um, uh, they need to 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 register their their manufacturing facility with the FDA. Number one, and number two, they need to appoint an FSVP agent, which is what's called a foreign supplier verifi verification program agent, to act on their behalf. That basically answers uh, to the FDA in the United States as a foreign importer. Now, those are the two things, let's say, that we would identify. And then we have a partner who we can refer them to that can actually help them in, in getting that FDA registration as well as appointing an FSVP agent. Nice. So, Rail, do, does Z have to have people physically in each one of the countries or no? Yes. So uh, having an import of record in that destination country isn't as simple as just registering a, a company in the, in, the, in the local country. You actually have to have a physical presence uh, with staff, directors, um, which is you know quite, quite a lot of administration. There's quite a lot of costs involved. But because of the, the global reach of our parent company, uh, we've set up an infrastructure and we, you know, for, for Amazon sellers to, to piggyback off of our our global network so that we can get their inventory into any destination, you know, into any major Amazon destination country in the world. Nice. So can you mention uh, what countries that, that Z has uh, people in? Sure. So uh, Canada, United States, uh, the UK, um, all of Amazon's pan EU countries. So that would be Germany, Italy, Spain, uh, Czech Republic, Poland, uh, I may have left one of them off from that from that list. Um, then we have Japan, Australia, Mexico, and Singapore. Nice. Yeah. So th there's two there that I don't do business with yet, which is Singapore and um, Australia. And Amazon, they do send emails often asking for. Uh, they even remove the fees if I wanted to sell in Singapore. So, but I, I didn't. I didn't check yet. I didn't have time for that. Interesting. Well, you know where to come to when uh, when you're ready to start importing. Definitely. So, uh, importer record is definitely not the same as a freight forward, correct? Because there's a freight forward can be anywhere, and they do different stuff. Yeah. So, so that's a good question. I think um, for the benefit of your listeners, there's you know there's there's kind of a, a lot of parties that are involved in the the international transportation and import clearance of inventory. Um, a freight forwarder is responsible for the international movement and sometimes the local delivery of the inventory, just to, depending on the setup of that particular freight forwarder. Um, and, and, and Z is not a freight forwarder. Uh, we're an importer of record specialist that provides a value-added logistics, air freight logistics solution, uh, as, as I previously mentioned. Um, and then th there'll be other parties in the transactions, like a, like a customs broker in the local destination country that actually files the, uh, the import clearance with the local customs office. Uh, and then obviously an importer of record, which is, which is us. Okay. Now, one of the questions that a lot of people are going to want to know is, if I wanted Z to be my importer of record, now, does it matter if I'm importing, let's say, one sweater or 20,000 in the same shipment? Uh, absolutely not. So... Uh, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, we, we have no minimum or maximum size for a client. Uh, we have clients all the way from 
you know, one product in one market going into, you know, one or two new markets all the way up to Amazon aggregator businesses that have up to 25, 30 brands under their, uh, their umbrella that are using our services. Uh, what, what, you know, what we've learned in this business is that uh, if you, if you have a successful product in your local market, um, there is no reason why you shouldn't be successful in a new marketplace. Uh, I think a lot of people think that, you know, countries are very different. People are very different. Uh, while there may be cultural differences and geographical differences, uh, people are 95% the same. Uh, they like the same things. Uh, they like convenience. They like products. And uh, like I say, you know, if you do have that successful product in your local market, there's no reason why you shouldn't succeed in a new market. And obviously, Z makes the process of importing your inventory into your new market really simple. And now can Z help me if I wanted to, let's say if I wasn't in Europe yet and I would need, needed a VAT or economic operation uh, operators registration ID, would you be able to help my company or any other company with that? Yeah, so I, th I think there's maybe two, two things to address here. So yes, the, the answer to that question is yes, we can definitely assist with both. Um, I think I think a lot of sellers that are you know that want to enter the European market for the first place uh, don't seem to to understand exactly what the requirements are. So one of the requirements is having a VAT registration in the local country. The reason being that the EU legislation as well as the UK legislation provides for if you are going to store inventory in that particular country, you have to be VAT registered there. Uh, which that is what triggers the VAT registration. Uh, the client will, or the seller will also need a, an EORR number, which is basically a, a local importer or business identification number with the local authorities. On top of that, they will need a local entity registered within the EU or the UK with a local EU or UK EORI number uh, to be the import of record in order for the goods to actually clear customs. So a lot of, a lot of the time we get questions from, from sellers that say, listen, you know, I've got my VAT registration, I've got my EORI number, uh, but I still can't import into the EU or into the UK. And, and the reason for that is, is that requirement to have a local importer, um, uh, to, you know, to take on that customs liability of the import. So that VAT registration and EORI number gives you the ability to start trading in that particular country, but it doesn't allow you to actually import inventory into that country. Okay, got it. That's, that's a good explanation. And now uh, I want to know who are Z's target clients? Like, uh, I, know, I know you already said it, it can be, we can bring, like I said, one sweater or 20,000 sweaters. So the size doesn't matter, but are you looking for anything specific in, in your clients? We're looking for clients that want to expand their, their e-commerce businesses globally. Um, we, we generally have more success uh, with, with clients who are building their own brands. Um, the reason for that is there's a lot more longevity in a business, uh, and, and you can speak to this as well, you, you're in the space. Uh, you'll have a lot more longevity in your business um, if, you, if you're building your own brand, you're trying to build a reputation. Uh, but again, we, there's no there's no discrimination. We we will work with with any uh, any company that's looking to expand outside of their local market. Okay, so using your services uh, as means the um, the seller. Let's imagine it's me in this case. I'm still going to need an importer, uh, not importer of record, but a freight forward, correct? So, um, if you're going to use air freight. Um, we would, you know, we would really recommend you use our air freight solution. Uh, you know, it gives us a lot more control over the entire process. It or you also benefit from our volume discounted rates, uh, in which case then, you know, you have one person that you speak to for your entire, entire process, you know, one supplier that will pick up the goods, do the international delivery, act as the import of record and do the final delivery. Uh, there are instances where clients want to use uh, their own freight forwarders in, in, you know, when they want to use road, if it's, you know, from the UK into the EU, or if it's from Canada into the US or vice versa, uh, or sea freight, you know, which is obviously for, for much larger, you know, maybe full container loads. Um, we've provided versatility to our to our clients where we will actually work with uh, our clients chosen freight forwarder a lot of a lot of sellers have quite an, you know lot, lots of established relationships they've used uh, their freight forwarders over long periods of time it's not a problem for us we'll work with the the chosen freight forwarder and we will uh, appoint the customs broker in the local country 
uh, and act as the client importer once those goods arrive. Uh, and then obviously pro uh, provide the, the, the seller with the customs clearance documents um, once the goods have cleared customs. And how long is that process now of uh, custom clearance typically? So it really depends on the destination country. Um, it can be anywhere from three to five days. Um, if there's, you know, it, it can extend beyond that if customs decide to inspect the goods or if they, they have a difference on the HS codes that should have been used. Um, you know, as an importer, you'll know that things can be quite uh, volatile at times. Yeah. But yeah, like I say, you know, because of the established processes that we have with our global network of brokers and the, the work that we do on uh, classifying your products, doing the HS code classification, identifying all the product compliance documents, the risk of any delays at customs are, are pretty much driven to, to zero. Perfect. And I, I don't know about it, every other seller out there, but uh, I had some huge delays in the past. And um, uh, some of them at the beginning was just because uh, I, I was trying to do everything myself at one point. And, um, and, and I guess it doesn't work that way. But I've had, I'm talking about almost 60 days uh, in, in one case that didn't go too well. But it's my advice that anybody that's listening, if you really don't know how to do it, get somebody that knows what they're doing, because it can save you a lot of time. And time, not only time is money, but it, there is actual money involved in these things. Because in my situation where it was almost 60 days, I had to pay warehouse fees to where, uh, to customs, I guess, uh, wherever it was stored. And, um, that was crazy, but anyway. yeah, it can be re it can be really stressful. And and Quinn, I just want to I want to just elaborate. You know, you you asked who is Z's target client. Uh, I, th I think there's this one sort of thing I left out there. You know, you know, you can be an established seller like yourself, where you've you've got processes into your destination countries, be it the EU, Canada, or uh, uh, the US, wherever it may be. Uh, but you may have four or five or six different suppliers for all of those different countries. With Z. Uh, you pretty much bring all of that into one. So you have one point of contact uh, that can do the import compliance and uh, international delivery, if you use our freight solution, into the entire global distribution uh, of, of your, your Amazon business or, or e-commerce business. So our, 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 our target client range ranges all the way from a seller that's starting or wants to enter a new market for the first time. But actually where we've had a lot of success is in clients who had eight or nine different suppliers into their different countries and now came to Z, had one point of contact for, for all of the nine destinations and were able to save money uh, on their freight because of our, our volume driven rates. So I think it's just an important you know, point for your listeners is even if you have uh, you know, established processes into your different countries, if you are selling internationally, if you want to simplify your supply chain and have one point of contact for all of those countries, as uh, is is the right provider for you. Gotcha. And now uh, we, we already mentioned it a few times here, but if anybody that's listening is interested, where would they find Z? Where would they find Rail? Where would they know more about you? Uh, so that's that's a great question. So our first. Uh, the first point is for them to reach our website. That's www.z.co. Um, they'll have a nice, you know, there's a nice overview there of our services uh, once again. And then there'll be a contact us form uh, where they can fill in just a, you know, a few pieces of information, their name, their surname, their email address. And then uh, one of our, our expert consultants will reach out uh, pretty much immediately once that, that query is made. Um, you know, the, the, the seller will have the opportunity to explain, you know, their business to us, their business model, what they're looking for and where they're looking to go. Um, and then, you know, our, our sales team will, you know, explain our service, prepare quotes, and then, uh, you know, hopefully onboard you uh, or onboard your listeners, you know, to, to test our service. And Rail, uh, we, we talked about it offline be, uh, before, but you mentioned you had a discount for our listeners. Correct. So uh, any of your listeners that, that do get onboarded with us will get $250 off of their first uh, transaction with us. Nice. So $250 bucks just for being a listener. So remember that. Uh, and uh, how do they uh, mention that to you? 
So it, in the query that they make on our website, please just uh, input there that you heard us on Kin's podcast and uh, our sales team will, will know uh, when preparing the first cost estimate that uh, that discount applies. Beautiful. All right, guys, you heard it here. Make sure to check it out. Rail, thank you very much for being here. It's a pleasure uh, to learn from you and have you here. Ken, thank you very much. Thanks for the, the time. And uh, yeah, thank you to all the listeners. Hopefully we can add some value to, to both your business and, uh, and their businesses. Thank you.